everybody, welcome to the iGamer Podcast. Uh, I am here with uh, Justin, Aaron, and Glenn, uh, and today we are beta testing a, a new game uh, running the Protocol Game Series, um, and uh, right over here, uh, there's a Kickstarter on right now, um, and it ends only in a couple days, so by the time this goes up, uh, you only have a couple days left. Uh, it is fully funded, but they're adding a bunch of stuff on. Uh, so this Protocol Game Series is a tabletop role-playing game, uh, and it's essentially group storytelling. So you act out scenes together, uh, and uh, you you kind of you try, try and try and complete various objectives as you go through. Uh, so for those of you who like the tabletop role-playing thing, but don't necessarily want to do the grind of having to pick up experience uh, and having to collect items, uh, this might be a good approach to take. Now the nice thing about this is it's really cheap. So each one is only three dollars a piece if you buy it during the Kickstarter. Uh, so you can save a ton of money. Uh, or you can pick up all of them for a lot cheaper. Uh, I think it was like $15 or something like yep. that gets you all of them in, in PDF form. Um, so I highly recommend checking this out. Um, we're gonna, we're, this is our first time playing it. Uh, it's also our first time using uh, the GM-less game protocol. So the GM-less game protocol is one which doesn't require a, a game master or a dungeon master. So we will all be playing today, uh, which is kind of exciting. Normally I'm used to uh, GMing uh, this group or one of our, or Tyler occasionally does it. Um, but today we all get to play, which is kind of nice. Uh, so you can see there's a bunch of other benefits here. So they're offering like full hardcover books, uh, a bunch of stretch goals in here. Um, so hi, I can and taking a look at this. Uh, the game that we're going to be playing in this series is called Joan of Arc. Um, so we are looking, we are a group of scientists and rescue personnel, and we're looking uh, or working to save a damaged space station before disruptive energy rips it apart. Um, so it looks like a, a, a good setup. So it looks like it's going to be tons of fun to play. The, the game is actually played with a deck of cards. Uh, so rather than using dice, uh, 52 card deck is all you need. Um, so what happens is you, you draw cards to, to uh, determine your motivation uh, in the game, uh, and you draw a card to determine a relationship between two other characters that you play with. So here we have the motivations and relationships. Uh, based on the card that you draw, you take your suit, you take the, the value, and that determines what your motivation is and what the relationship between those two people is. So for example, if I was to draw the three of spades uh, for duty impulsively or without considering the consequences, I will recklessly f do what I think is right or what is my duty to, to fulfill, and I will act recklessly in, in doing so, and it, I don't really think about what's gonna uh, happen no matter what. Um, for a rela relationship, you'll see how those uh, go in a second uh, when we run through the ones that we've come up for each of our characters. Um, so let's start off. We're going to go over uh, our characters. Uh, Justin, how about you start? All right. So I am Peter D'Souza, the local pilot. I drew I drew Love Inexplicably. So I'm going to be playing that as someone who tends to just jump in, uh, maybe maybe a little irresponsibly, but tends to be uh, both feet regardless of whether or not it's a great decision. Yeah, and that was the Queen of Hearts, right? Yes, and that would be a Queen of Hearts. Uh, and the relationship that I directed, engineered, built, whatever you want to go with, was between Brian and Aaron, who will be introduced in a moment. Uh, it's a burden of worry, where uh, Brian's character being a uh, search and rescue personnel... Um, I don't know if this is true of other ones, but he plays a little bit of the White Knight. He wants to save people, he wants to come up in shining armor and be lauded for saving everybody, which is good for search and rescue personnel. However, Aaron's character is not one that often wants for saving, and this, this kind of bugs him, and so he tends to look for ways to save her from either real or imagined fates, and Aaron's character would really prefer that he knock this off. Yeah, so apparently I have an issue with trying to trying to save people. Cool. All right, Erin, how about you? Uh, my character's name is Oswin Banks, and she is an engineer. Uh, and my motivation is family impulsively or without considering the consequences. So I took this more on the impulsively side um, because I'm going to say that Oswin is very much willing to make she will make just rash on the spot decisions when it comes to her family and she makes a lot of really kind of just last minute like impulsive decisions it there without really thinking it through uh, and this was i believe the 
ten of spades. No, it's this. Don't don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong now. <laughs> yeah, it's the ten of spades. Um, and the relationship that I have set up is between Justin and Glenn, uh, Glenn's character, and Glenn's character is my husband. Uh, oh, the okay. So the um, car, the relationship is romantic and ominous, and basically, Glenn is my husband, but Justin's character is my lover <laughs> <laughs> because of things that you will eventually find out. Um, but there's this ominous romantic tension between when will they find out about, well, I mean, obviously Justin's character knows, <laughs> but when will Glenn's character find out about this? All right. Awesome. Okay. So I am playing, uh, Cody Musgrave. Uh, so I am the search and rescue personnel. Uh, so I am kind of responsible for, uh, I'm kind of the, the highly trained soldier, uh, and I'm the one that can kind of survive in whatever situation I want. Um, and I got uh, seven of spades, which was glory without considering the circumstances. Um, so um, I will do whatever I, I, I need to, to uh, or I, I kind of think recklessly in terms of, um, I, I want to save as many people as I possibly can, and I want, I want to be the one who does it. I don't want anyone else. I, I'm, I'm determined to be that person and not necessarily share that with anyone else. Um, so I've, I've kind of got that writing on me. Um, as for the relationship that I picked out, uh, I picked out uh, Burden of Rivalry, which was the uh, the Jack and Clubs, and I put that between uh, Glenn and Aaron. Um, so being that they are married, uh, they've got, uh, or married in the game, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> married in the game. Adam, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, given that they're married in the game, but they're also working on the same uh, recovery team. Uh, they find that there's a little bit of competition there, and it puts some strain on their relationship. Potentially, hence, you know, due to uh, <laughs> due, due to some other things that happened in a, in uh, at previous points. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Glenn. So I'm playing Cosgrove, just the last name. Um, I play as a sweeper, so it's kind of a soldier um, person who can hack things, break into. Uh, break, through, break through doors, that kind of stuff. And the motivation I got was the five of clubs, which is unyielding and fear or desperation. So I took this to mean that uh, my character is able to override those. So in situations where he would be afraid or, or feel fear, he's able to, to sort of suppress that and do what needs to be done in order to, to achieve the goal. The relationship that I got was the three of clubs. And that is burden of loss or reconciliation. And I put that between Brian and Justin's characters. So what happened was, on a previous mission, uh, Justin was piloting a plane that contained people Brian had saved. It didn't contain Brian himself. Um, Justin unfortunately crashed the plane, um, thus the, the survivors didn't survive. Uh, Justin was the only <laughs> survivor. And um, Brian blames Justin's character for it. I ended up un unsurviving a lot of the survivors. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of, uh, kind of undid that. Yeah. yeah. Unsurviving. Unsurvived a bunch of survivors. It's a new word now. <laughs> <laughs> it is a new word. Uh, so we're going to go over some of the world building stuff. Uh, so we each picked one of the items in the list that the, came with the rule book. Uh, they, they come in the form of a question, uh, and we each answered it. Um, so Glenn, you had asked, uh, how far away from you are the Galactic Core? Um, and yeah. Yep. Okay. So I I picked that we are we're pretty far away from the core. We're about one whatever the equivalent distance is for a generation to get there um, without aging too much. Um, but the it's an outbound colony. It's it's there to to get us to the next habitable planet for resources. Um, so the, the next habitable planet is unfortunately an, another generation away. So a lot of the people on this col colony are there as sort of continuing on the populace to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Aaron, uh, you had asked... Uh, how many or answered how many people were on the uh, were trapped on, on this station and uh, who were the first to die which is kind of morbid but yeah <laughs> yeah so I said there were about 50 people on this space station um, and the majority of them uh, were actually kind of more lay people like kind of the your like space colonist type people so not necessarily uh, really high ups are on the ship and directly involved with it. Um, but unfortunately, all the people who were in that sort of position, or the majority of them, are the ones who actually did die first. So like, there is no 
captain left alive on the ship, none of the big chief engineering officers, any of the, re the really high ups are all gone. So this space station is largely in a state of chaos and kind of there's a lot of power struggles going on and there no one really knows what to do. Cool. They're lacking a lot of technical expertise. Awesome. All right. Uh, Justin, you had answered the question, describe the last time your team failed in an operation like this and your feelings about that failure. <laughs> Which just adds some extra backstory into this already <laughs> weird relationship that's going around here. All right. So, last time our team failed ended with Aaron and I, Aaron's character and my character, rather, trapped and trapped alone and fully believing that this was the last, our last hours to be alive. And as such, this is when our... Uh, Romance, Kindle. <laughs> he, he jumped in with both feet, folks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just the way Peter does things, and it just happens. It it just happens, awesome. and Peter feels pretty good about it. <laughs> <laughs> he realizes he probably he he understands that this isn't a thing that's smart, sustainable, a good idea, but that's not how that's you, not Peter. You know, when you're a few hours from death, that's kind of Sustainable isn't really a big deal for you. Yeah, <laughs> no one, no one cares. But playing to the love, um, playing to my, playing to my feats, my motivation. What the hell? Thank you. <laughs> oh my god! Playing to my motivation, it works. Awesome. All right. Uh, and I had answered the question: What caused the space station to rupture in the first place? Uh, and I said that it was a. Uh, an asteroid that the space station was trying to avoid, but uh, and they inevitably got clipped, and unfortunately they got clipped on one of their uh, one of their major power sections, uh, and they're they're losing they're losing power fast. Um, so yeah, so that covers our world building. So it kind of provides some um, insight into uh, the world that we'll be diving into. So we've built our characters. We've defined our relationships. We have our world built. Now. Uh, we each get one drama point. Drama points get used to manipulate the rules as we go along. Um, we'll, we'll talk about some of that in a little bit. Uh, and they're also, they also get used in the ending scene. Um, so the gameplay will be as follows. Uh, Glenn is offered to do the opening scene. So the, the opening scene is a vignette of desperation or worry. Uh, then we each take turns doing, doing scenes. There's four rounds of them. Uh, and they're either a vignette, which is kind of an, an internal monologue. Think film noir style. Uh, where you are kind of talking to yourself for like 30 seconds a minute. Uh, the game directions say somewhere between a minute and two. Uh, I'm not nearly creative enough to come up with something for two minutes straight, so <laughs> I'm going to limit myself a little bit on that. Um, there's interrogations, which uh, are the person who draws the card uh, asking a series of questions to another character. Uh, there's interludes, which is the director um, putting two of the other characters into a situation where they have to... Um, interact with each other uh, so they're, the director presents a, uh, a situation based on the cards that are drawn or there's ensembles which are all of the characters together again with the director giving a direction as to why they are all together and, and the situation that they're, they're presented with uh, so over this time we'll have the opportunity to collect and use our drama points uh, which will come into play at the end um, so yes we have the opening scene we have four rounds of, of scenes where we have the opportunity, each one of us has the opportunity to be the director four times. Mm -hmm. Then we finalize with split second timing, which we use our remaining drama points in order to in, to escape the uh, in, in order to escape the space station uh, and hopefully survive with our lives and with as many people rescued as possible. Uh, and then the, finally, the end game is kind of the, the, the post mortem, the post analysis. We kind of see, mm -hmm. okay, how many people survived, who died. Um, and which of our characters was changed by the incident that was brought upon us. All right, so the opening scene, Glenn, how about you, how about you start us off? Sure. I knew we'd been growing apart, she and I. That's why I decided if we made it out of this alive, I was going to renew our wedding vows. She, she was changed after that trip back. I guess being so close to death does that to you. We're coming up on the vessel now, and Looking at her silhouetted, remembered why I proposed in the first place. Cool. All right, so that starts us off. I feel like such a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Success. <laughs> it's 
school done. All right. So we're starting off. Uh, we're gonna, they, they say that you can do the scenes in any order, just for sake of keeping this nice and easy. We're just gonna work our way down. Uh, so I'll start off first. Uh, so I draw two cards. Okay. All right, so I drew uh, six of diamonds and the ace of hearts. So the six of diamonds was the first one I drew. So it's an interrogation because of the diamonds. Uh, and uh, it's about fire or oxygen. Uh, so that's the scene. Uh, the location is the ace of hearts. Uh, and it has to do with um, something insulated or quarantined outside. Um, so I'm going to be uh, interrogating Oswin or Aaron's character uh, about uh, about. So we, we've I'm going to say that we've just approached our ship has just approached the the space station uh, and we're surveying the damage from the outside um, and, and we're trying to get some insight into it. So as part of an interrogation, I steal a drama point from, from Aaron's character. So I'm up to two. Aaron's down to zero. <laughs> pout, pout, pout. Pout, 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 Alright. Um, I'm going to try and do these in character. So if I do them in character, I'm directly posing them to her. Uh, if I do them out of character, it's kind of this abstract, uh, an abstract question that it's almost like she answers as an internal monologue. In a sense, you can kind of do if they didn't say that you have to do them. They say up to five the questions you can ask in an interrogation, and there's no there's nothing specified about they all have to be in character or they all have to be out. So I can vary it up as I so choose. Okay, cool. Um, which is handy because what if I I can't figure something out halfway through? All right, so Oswin, what do you think about the damage outside? It looks like uh, ob obviously it, you know, it looks like there's there's something that it's leaking out there. What do you what do you think we're going to have to do here? Well, it looks like uh, the asteroid must have hit the main power cell because all the lights are off on the ship, and there might be some uh, some of the fuel appears to be slowly leaking out. So what uh, fluids we did have left in the ship are slowly going to be getting worse and worse. Okay, so the the, the longer we wait now. Uh, or we, we're gonna have to do something with, with this because or, or what, what do you think I, I mean if we if we leave it uh, then then our our time is shorter on here we're not gonna have as much time to get get any survivors off um, or we can dive straight in and, and, and try and try and save all these people and just kind of assume that our time is going to be more limited well it's a tough call I'm thinking if knowing more about this, really is just going to waste our time. The From the outside, things look pretty bad. I think we might just need to assume that we're not going to have any oxygen in there and that the survivors are going to be limited. So we should probably go for the survivors as soon as possible because I don't think doing much more analysis from out here is going to help us. All right, that, that, makes, that makes sense to me. Um, so that's all the questions I have. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to the next scene. Uh, so the cards that we draw don't get put back into the deck. Uh, they only get put back if we find ourselves uh, out of cards. Okay. Um, it should not happen if we do this correctly. Uh, I kind of want to do, yes, we should be okay. I was like, let's do the math on that first before we say something. I'm pretty sure they've done the math on this and it should work out. If not, beta! Eight, 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 yeah. times, eight times four, 32. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we, are, we got some cushion. All right. Good. I was going to say, okay. Cool. All right, okay. so it's Aaron's uh, scene next. We have the Four of Clubs followed by the Queen of Diamonds. Cool. All right, so Four of Clubs says it's a vignette about innocent lives. Uh, and the location, uh, the diamonds makes it damaged slash barricaded. The queen makes it about tools. So a vignette about the innocent lives uh, relating to... Um, inaccessible or unusable tools. We landed on the ship. Things don't look good. We're all decked out in our typical oxygen suits and we all look kind of funny. I've always thought that about these things. Never most flattering. We un Unfortunately, we ended up on what appears to be the other side of a blockade in the passage from where all the, survi all the survivors appear to be. Well, at least we hope they're survivors. But unfortunately, I just don't think we have the right tools to get through this without causing more damage to the ship and causing further loss of oxygen. We just really can't afford to lose any more at this point, or we could end up killing more people than we save. I'm really not sure what to do. All right, so our next scene is Justin. 
Next scene is described by a Five of Hearts and a Three of Hearts. All right. In that order. So the Five of Hearts is an interlude <clears throat> with regards to analysis. You said Three of Hearts for the other one? Three of Hearts, yes. Three of Hearts. So for it was insulated or quarantined vehicle. Okay. So this means... So just to go over the rules of an interlude. Uh, an interlude involves uh, two characters in a pre-existing relationship. So any of the relationships that we defined before, mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones that Justin can employ here. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, or neither of the two characters need to be Justin's character, although they could be. Um, the scene runs as long as the director wants, um, without being too self-indulgent. I'm kind of reading off the rule sheet here. I'm not really putting <laughs> these aren't my own words really. Um, and whenever Justin wants the scene to end, he just simply says "scene" and we stop. Um, the interludes only involve one location, uh, and we, if we ever decide to leave that location as the characters involved, the scene ends. So all the players that are not involved in the scene uh, will gain one drama point at the end of the interlude. Okay. You don't get to point the end. Uh, you, you don't get. To, you, you, might, you might be involved. You might be involved. You actually are. Damn it! <laughs> this is going to be a conversation between Cosgrove and Oswin as to whether or not you can get through that barricade to get to the alternate. Uh, to get the to get to the alternate docking point, to where we might be able to move more people a lot more efficiently. Excellent. If you would. We're gonna need to go back to the ship to get tools to get through this wall. Like we don't have what we need while we're here. This blockade is staying. If you want, I can try while while you, you go and get what you need. What you think we need? I don't. That's not a good. You're just gonna make more damage. This isn't. Like, how are you? How do you propose we get through this blockade? Well, I can use what's on my belt. What do you have? <laughs> some some stuff. Okay, I just yeah. have an arc welder. I'll be honest. You have an arc welder and you didn't say anything. It didn't really come up. Okay. And see. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so two things that happen now. Uh, one, the two people that weren't involved in, in the interlude get a, a, a drama point. So Justin and I, Aaron does not. Uh, and if Glenn or Aaron wants to override that scene, uh, or the end of that scene, they have the option to do that by spending one of their drama points. Mm -hmm. I'll spend my non-existent <laughs> oh, drama wait. point. Oh wait, Aaron can't do it. <laughs> Alright, so our next scene is over to Glenn. Okay, uh, let's see what's going on here. I've got a nine of diamonds and a two of clubs in that order. All right. All right, so the, in, in the nine of diamonds is an interrogation with regards to movement or transportation, and the location is a populated hatch. So you may... This, this lines up pretty okay. So you may pick one of us to interrogate, and you take a drama point from them, uh, and then you ask a number of questions in character or out of character. Are awesome. you able to do this to people who don't have drama points? Yes, you may. You okay. don't get a drama point, but you, okay. but you can do that. Just curious. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be interrogating Brian. So I get one of Brian's many, many drama points. <laughs> right. part of my wow, plan. someone's... Uh, <laughs> part of my plan is complete. A little uh, hashtag yeah. bitter about their uh, drama <laughs> points. <laughs> hashtag bitter. <laughs> Look, let's just, say, let's just say her drama points are getting around. Uh, anyway, so... Okay, so we need to get to this alternate, what was it? An alternate, you mentioned in the previous scene, we're going to an alternate drop point because it's closer to the, the survivors. How do you think we'll be able to get from there to the survivors? Do you have any idea with regards to like the layout of the ship or hmm. any other intel regarding that? Have, like, have you worked on this previously? I haven't been on this ship before myself. Obviously, it's traveled a great distance. It's my first time here, yep. just as it is yours. Um, that being said, you know what? Perhaps the layout of the ship means that uh, there might be another source of access. So we're looking at this from like straight ahead. Uh, we know that there's another uh, access point from the outside, so we'd have to get in our ship in order to move, move around there. Yeah. But you know what? There, there it looks like there's another hallway down here. We might be able to to, to walk around that. It. So it's perhaps worth exploring that path. Okay. Um, would you be? Would you mind taking one of the crew and, and going and checking that out while myself and the pilot go around and. Uh 
Sure, I can, I can, I can take a look down there. I, I oh, and I can even go myself. I, I, I'm pretty adept at surviving in in rough conditions if need yeah, be. Yeah, but we don't know what's going to happen, so I think it'd be best for you if you take um, Osmond with you. <laughs> sure, uh, I, I take my. I don't know. I, like, I I would kind of prefer to do this myself, but I mean, if like if you're gonna really gonna like, I don't, I don't really care what happens to me. But I mean, if if you say so, I mean, I'll, I'm, whatever. Buddy, buddy system and. Cool. I'm done. All right. Uh, so I'm next. Uh, so my scene will be the Jack of Diamonds and the Nine of Hearts. So an interrogation about a power surge and an insulated quarantined laboratory. An insulated slash quarantined laboratory. Man, that's cool. That, yeah, that's a good one, yeah. actually. That's a good one. That's a very good one. All right, so I'm going to go with. Um, so we, we've discovered that there's a there's been a power surge in one of the laboratories, and it seems to be on the outside of the um, on the outside of the ship. Or not, sorry, on the outside of the space station. Uh, so flying the ship around there might there might be some interference, and there might be some issues with that. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm looking to hopefully assess the risk of that before before continuing. So I'm going to be interrogating Peter or Justin's character, so I get a drama point from him. Uh, so Peter, what what what's uh, you see that power surge? That looks that looks bad. Like, is it, how is it going to affect the ship flying by there? Um, our landing craft should be basically okay, mostly because it doesn't go fast enough that if it gets tossed around, nothing should nothing bad should happen. But we won't be able to do it quickly, and we'll have to play it very very conservatively. Okay. How about like the so we were, it was fairly easy to dock here. How about docking on the other side? I mean, like we. we Power surge, okay, maybe sh should be okay, but like the other side looks kind of wrecked up. How do you think it's going to be able to dock there? I'll we'll have to know when we see it. At okay. this point, All right. assuming the strike wasn't a through and through, it might be okay, but that's almost never the case. Okay, good to know. Um, so out of character, uh, I'm going to pose the internal question to you of um, like so so. I'm assuming you're you're kind of going. All right, no, we should be fine. Are, do you have any like concerns that you don't want to let anyone else know about? That you're kind of like, like, do you have any fears of going close to this? Or you're like, oh yeah, no, I totally got this. I really, I really do think that the station might be okay because this is this is one of the older models, which is how we managed to catch up to it, of course, um, and. Peter's really... Peter likes the... He's a bit of the idiot romantic. He likes the whole... It's, you know, it's a bit of an older one. In a better time, he falls for the whole nostalgia gig. Where, you know, like... They were built better. They're not built better. We managed to catch it. It goes slow enough <laughs> that one of our ships managed to catch up to this thing that's hurtling along as fast as it can. Well, it but, was. Well, it was, yeah, yeah, exactly. But... He doesn't care. It's... It's got the old. It's got the. It's older design. He really loves it. He doesn't want to believe that this station can be falling apart. He's got a little bit of the Han Solo and all. He, he's Millennium really. Falcon. Yeah, he really loved. Like he really. He fell in love with it as soon as he saw it. It's, it's this beautiful old thing that has been out here for long enough that it's gotten the paints worn down. The numbers aren't the same, and it's just. It's got. It's got a little more. A little more to it than something fresh rolling out of the. Uh, well, not rolling, but, you know, <laughs> moving out of the orbital dockyards. Forever twirling, twirling, twirling. <laughs> it's what attracted him to Aaron's character. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, in character, right? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's Say I'm the older model. <laughs> You're sturdy. <laughs> oh, boy. And with that, that's my scene. Uh, Aaron, you're next. Alrighty. Do I have? I have an ace of spades and a king of clubs. Cool. That you guys can't see. Or you might here. be able to see, depending on how it turns out. <laughs> uh, Alright. He's pretty nifty, hey guys? Yeah. Alright, so the ace of spades is an ensemble of desperation. Yes. <laughs> and good. this is a populated intelligence or data 
All right, so an ensemble involves all of the characters, so we all play. Um, like an interlude, uh, the director has the opportunity to determine um, the, the exact scene that we're working in. Uh, and then we kind of handle this organically, or we have a discussion in character. Um, so Aaron can end the scene at any time simply by saying scene, and again, we can kind of override that by spending drama points if we so choose. Um, so there is the potential for a little bit, like, you're gonna, I'm sure we're going to find out that because we have differing, um, differing um, motivations. motivations, thank you, that we're going to start butting heads a little bit. There's the opportunity for that. Uh, so there's potentially some conflict resolution that needs to happen at the end. Um, so if that ever happens, we will uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that at the end of this. Um, so Aaron, you're seen. All right. So uh, the scenario is that we all went back to the landing shuttle. Uh, and are attempting to access the other entrance to the craft, uh, to the space station. Uh, and in doing so, we have to go very, very near to the laboratory because it's almost right beside the other entrance. And we, our shuttle encountered the power surge and the problems with that that were previous, previously mentioned. Uh, and now we are all in the cockpit of our little craft, kind of going crazy about what how we're going to solve this problem because we're slowly losing control of the ship. All right. So we'll start. So I'm pretty sure this has something to do with that power surge. I mean, like, I, I warned you about that. Like, did you, why weren't we flying further away? A power surge certainly would be causing the problems that we're seeing right now. I, I assumed it wouldn't be as big of an issue as it seems to be. And so we did have to go close. There's no real avoiding it. This gives us three options, the way I see it. We either chance it and just keep doing what we're doing uh, fall back and just accept that we can't get into this door or bring it bring the ship away from the station and just take a run at it with our engines off as it's not it's not the power fluctuation that's actually pushing us or anything like that it's the fact that it's fiddling with uh, it's fiddling with our stabilizers. Well, how are we supposed to slow down then? We're just going to ram into this space station. Yes. More, more importantly, how do we get the craft away later when we need to get off? Well, that's the thing. It's kind of a one-way insertion, and then we have to... But then we can come at that blockade from the back, and it might be a little bit easier to take I it. like it. Let's do it. You know what? We're going to... It's the easiest way to get the people from there. Let's go in. Let's just do it. Let's do it now. But hit the pedal. And hopefully there's something we might be able to do about that power surge. If we can turn it off, then we won't have any trouble. Can we at least get away first? Then we can discuss it then. Is like just, 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 yes. just just take us a bit further <clears throat> and we can discuss it while you're doing that. Fine. Okay. But turn around, we're gonna dive straight in there. Let's go for it. Scene. Cool. Alright, so I don't think there was any conflict there at the end. I think we're all relatively in agreement. A More or less. Bit. Yeah, I think so. Actually, I'm gonna. I have a thing I want to. I want to mention. Ooh. So I'm gonna burn. I'm gonna burn my Ooh. my soul drama point. All right. Heard it here first, folks. <laughs> we don't know how many or if any of the station's landers still work, and this is our only one. So, unless one of you knows that there's one that works on board, this kind of a gamble that, let's call it. 60% chance of completely disabling our way of getting back to our ship. Well, chances are, if there was one that was working, uh, their people that were on board would have used them already. So we have to assume that they at least don't, that they don't have any power or are not working in some way. It might, but considering the fact that they should have their own independent emergency uh, power supply, um, it's most likely that the main power somehow managed to um, disconnect the and put offline the release mechanism, and that's why they're not being released. So they might be actually functioning, but just unable to disconnect from the ship without the proper expertise. We should be fine. You know, we have an engineer. should take care of it. This should be something I can deal with, but I can't make any promises. This is all we, speculation. We could put this off to do a pass, a couple passes around the station. Guys, let's go for them. it. We're wasting time. We have to get in there. But we can't go in this just full hog. Like, we need to plan this through, or... Well, people are going to die if we don't get in there. We need to save as many people as possible. But if we go into this without any plans, everyone could die. Yeah, we'd just be throwing corpses on the pile. Sounds fun. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm, 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 I'm on them. Yeah. It so, be a bit more this, I only brought this up as a extreme edge case on the, off can on the off chance one of you knew something about the station that I don't. Unfortunately not. This is an older model that I'm not as familiar with. Never mm -hmm. had to encounter it before. Well, 
I've had a bit familiar. But with she her. is a beauty. <laughs> I. I have had a bit of familiarity with the craft before. Um, I know this one does have actually two sets, or at least two locations for them. So if one of them was somehow disabled as a result of the meteor hitting, the other one would be accessible. So either they don't have access to it, or as mm -hmm. we said, the the um, docking clamps aren't releasing. You know what? Mm -hmm. All I'm hearing is that we're going to be fine. And there's there's going to be a way to get off of this. Sure, that's a bit of a gamble, but you know what? It sounds like the gamble's going to pay off. I think we're going to save more lives than we're going to then I think it's going to be better overall. Let's just get in there. I think we're wasting time. Well, I guess there's nothing for it. Let's do it. All right. You call scene, by the way. I do scene. All right. So uh, in an ensemble, the scene ends. Uh, it can leave the conflict dangling. Um, and that's just kind of how that ends there. We don't really, there's no resolution to it. So uh, that, can, that can linger. We can either address it later in the future... Uh, or it can just stay that way and some things are left unsaid. Um, so in the event uh, that there's conflict in an interlude, the director ends up determining the resolution. Okay. Uh, but we didn't run into But that. an ensemble... What, whatever conflict occurs, occurs. But interludes have all their Not strands tied up. Tied up. Yeah. Yes. Correct. You're absolutely correct. Cool. Alright. So my scene's going to be defined by the Jack of Hearts. And the Three of Diamonds. All right, so... Which are... Jack of Hearts is an interlude uh, with regards to a power surge. Uh, and the Three of Diamonds is a damaged or barricaded vehicle. Okay. That works. Although I don't like where it's going. No. What I'm thinking is, we went for it. And we now have our shuttle slammed uh, exit door first into the lock. We like drift around or something yeah, like we that. Did like, a, we pulled the e-brake. <laughs> drifted. It's, it's space. Zeddy. You just went out, cut it around, and then you just run the thrusters and turn it around. Because you're not going to slam cockpit first in. You people die. Very true. Everybody dies. So we all strapped in as best as we could, slammed into the lock, and now it is up to our engineer and our professional door kicker to open the door. This is jammed in here pretty good, but I think we should be able to jimmy it loose with a bit of effort. I'll see what I can do. You have that arc welder still? I still have it. Uh, I have to be last... I, I don't want to go for it first, because that's going to cause damage that could cause air leaks later when we try to leave. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, see what you can do without it. Alright. Oh. Okay. I got part of the way open. I'm going to need you to take a run at it. See what you can do. Okay. Well. Oh, I think I might have the right thing for this. I fix it. Okay, I think it's opening. It's gonna open. Does everyone have their air suits on? Because this might not have air once we open the door. And just yeah, I was like, and Justin and I aren't in this. No, that's, that's Who was a, a general comment? No, that yeah. was a good. That was a good time for scene. If if yeah, you hadn't called it, I was gonna, I was just gonna be like, yeah, I got it, and then just assume I was answering for other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to get to the point where it either worked or didn't work, mm -hmm. and I was gonna leave that decision up to you. Yeah, sounds very good. I felt I felt like two rounds in or not even completed two runs in, dooming us immediately felt like the wrong decision. I was yeah. thinking about dooming us immediately. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really... I'd kind of like to finish a whole round of this at some point. We are supposed to be testing this out. Well, I really wanted to just doom us all to die in a tiny little pole. And, uh, you know. Leave it. Okay, so cool. Uh, Justin and I, we get one drama point each uh, for that last interlude. Yep. Alright. Hey, go ahead. You're up. Okay, let's see what I got. Okay, I got a king of spades, followed by a ten of hearts. All right, so king of spades is uh, an ensemble with external conflict. Uh, and the ten of hearts is uh, an insulated communication center or quarantined communication center. So basically what's going to happen is there's a piece of flying debris coming at us, and it's set to hit... The, the space station, it, it doesn't look big enough to, like, take out the station entirely, but um, we probably need to radio in um, just to, to let people know what's going on, um, because it might take out, like, one of the available um, ways of getting off the station now that we don't have access to our own hopper. Cool. 
Guys, there's something really big flying through the sky. It's going to hit us. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not that close. Uh, yeah. So while we're flying in, there's something on the scanners while um, Peter was focusing on piloting. It looks like there's something flying towards us. It's not big enough to take the, the entire colony out, uh, but it looks like it may damage... Like, there is a chance that it might damage one of our available ways getting off the ship. I think that we should... Um, we should try and radio in for help just in case that does happen, and then see if we can't find a spot, either find one of the hoppers and get off of here, or find a, a place to hunker down and well, wait for them. Well, I mean, how much of that was the power surge? I mean, we, we, we had trouble with piloting. I mean, what, what did it do to our scanners? Like, may, maybe, maybe it's not even there. Power surge sh shouldn't interfere with the scanners, but it is possible. Well, in either case, it does seem like we need to get communi to communications in order to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. That also contains the radio. And maybe, the oh, maybe the communication center on the ship is still working. That might, that'll be more powerful than ours. And assuming that we can get at least some, some amount of power for the station back, we can, depending on how far away it is, we might be able to move the station out of the way. Very true. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah. was going to mention that also the, um, the comms run on their own independent power that's locally... Mm -hmm. uh, that's located within the room, so um, the asteroid hit wouldn't have knocked it out. Okay. Well, keeping that in mind, before we bust open this hatch, we should probably be trying to radio on to the space station and see if we can actually get a hold of anyone. I mean, we've been, I mean I'm all for kicking down the door, but maybe if we can figure out the, the easiest way of getting to them and getting them off the ship, you know, before we go in. Seems like a decent idea. You know, Did... this just occurred to me that... The, if the ship was working properly before the asteroid hit, uh, and all their comm systems were working, there's no reason why the asteroid should have actually hit. They should have been able to get out of the way. Their systems should have been able to pick that up with enough warning to move, to move the station over. Yep. That's an issue. That does worry me. It's a good point. All right, so we may be, we, we may be screwed either way. So we might have. We might have some people who are working against us on the ship. It. Also, to be a little more benign, it could have been something a little too small to be picked up, moving at a huge, a huge amount of speed. It is possible, but the damage does seem to indicate a larger asteroid that should have been picked up on the systems. Mm-hmm. But I want to believe that we're not walking in, that we're walking into people looking... I want to believe that on the other side of this door are people who are going to be happy to see us and not people who are going to be trying to kill us. Well, unfortunately, people aren't perfect. All right, so it's my turn. Uh, I have the Eight of Hearts and the Two of Diamonds. Eight of Hearts is an interlude with regards to illness or injury, and the Two of Diamonds is a damaged or quarantined hatch. Sorry, damaged or barricaded hatch. All right, so uh, I'm going to get uh, Justin and Glenn mm -hmm. as part of this interlude. Um, so uh, the scene will be as we're about to bust down the door that we've cut part of the way through and we're like, are you ready? Like, you're ready to break down? And um, and Glenn realizes that on the other side of the door, um, there, it looks like there may be uh, a number of injured passengers um, that are that are that are stuck in a, in a in a hatch. It looks like we've crashed into to right around one of the hatches, into one of the yeah into the sides of one of the hatches. I just thought of something when before I start. Our windows kind of blown. Everyone's holding on to something. What happens if there are people on the other side? Uh, that means that side is pressurized and the door flings out to space and crushes us. Okay, that's also bad. It's uh, less, yeah. Pre presumably presumably the people also follow it. Yeah, we need to not do this. Okay. Uh, we uh, we need to get them to... We need to get them to get out of that hallway and get them... Yeah, we need to get them out of that hallway, yeah. first and foremost. Okay. Uh, I'll see if I can't patch us through... Um, the communications to the other side don't look damaged. It's just a matter of whether they hooked up or not. Well, while you, when when it, you know, hit. I mean, Morse code is still a thing. If we can't get anything, we can, you can still bang on a door. Would Hopefully, you, they'll get it. Would, are you, you're more familiar with that, right? Yep. Would you mind doing that while I see if I can't actually open a column? Yeah, we'll. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That can be done. And scene. All right. So it's Aaron's turn now. I have the eight of clubs. And the three of spades. All right. So the eight of clubs is 
um, is a vignette with regards to illness or injury um, in an energy crippled vehicle. Well, you're in an energy crippled vehicle, <laughs> guys. Guys, guys, everything, everything, everything's coming up. Story. <laughs> everything's coming up. Man, this feels really rigged, but it, I swear to God, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, like, look, look, these are actually... That, the that is not rigged. That's, 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 no, that's we're, we're, pulling, we're, we're pulling these up live. Like, we just shuffled that and left it. We're doing it live. Yeah. We're doing it live. All right. Cool. Okay, so it... One, once again, making sure... Vignette about in a... In, about, about illness, illness or, or in, injury. In a... Uh, okay. In so an energy-crippled vehicle. <laughs> this is <laughs> an energy-crippled vehicle. That's awesome. It's just amazing. Okay. Gotta send it over there. As I sit and wait... For Peter and Max to figure out how to get through this door. I just contemplate how crazy my life has become lately. I still can't believe I'm in this situation, despite all the weird stuff that's happened to me before. <sighs> I mean, they're trying to get through this door, and all I can think of... I should be thinking about the lives of the people on the other side that are potentially in danger from doing this, but all I can think of is this stupid situation I've got myself into. I still can't believe it happened. But... I mean, love is love. I don't really know what to do about that. But, oh, oh, I think they, they're they making some headway. Oh, okay, good. I think they're about to open the door. I really hope here aren't any people on the other side of this thing. And see. Cool. Very well done. So my turn, my round, is going to be described by the Ace of Diamonds and the Queen of Spades. Spades. No, clubs. Clubs. Queen of Clubs, sorry. Queen of Clubs. Okay, so the um, the Ace of Diamonds is mm -hmm. a interrogation of desperation, mm -hmm. and the Queen of Clubs is a is populated tools. Okay, so desperate desperate interrogation about where there are people and tools. Guess how I'm going to read that. Uh, okay, so it's going to be I don't get to set it up. It's always me and someone else, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So you are interrogating someone. Okay. I'm going to have Peter interrogate your character. Okay. So I lose a, uh, yep. a drama point. Indeed. And... I'm tripping drama points. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of third person, existentially. I want to know what your opinion is on sending potentially um, wounded, like less than capable human beings to go search the ship for tools for us to use. Well, at the end of the day, all I want to do is save as many people as I possibly can. If that means getting injured people to go find tools for me, then I say go for it. And if they're, like, injured people who might... Like, we're talking, like, proper... We don't move this person because there's a non-zero chance that that could injure them more. Oh, but kind then, of people. then I'm probably not going to be able to save them, so I should be leaving them as is, and I should probably be looking for the tools myself. At the end of the day, I want to save that person's life, and if I'm going to risk their death just so I can find tools, then it's, it's not worth it. Okay. And mm -hmm. see. Cool. All right. Glenn, you're up. All right, so I got the five of diamonds followed by the six of spades. All right, an interrogation on analysis and the six of spades is a energy crippled uh, storage set, uh, storage area. I kind of want to steal from someone who has. Don't game the game. <laughs> you know, no meta. Well, then I'll be asking Aaron. Aaron's really useful and full of good information. Do you, you I have... miss you, drama point! I didn't, know, <laughs> okay. I didn't know she had one. Everything's fine. <laughs> oh, no. oh, this somehow now gets to benefit Why? me. We're going to be all right now. But also the story. Uh, okay. So, so we managed to get th through that door without killing anyone. The unfortunate part is we now have to progress further without killing anyone else. So it seems like we need to shut this, like seal this area in. The problem is... The tools I would use to do to do this are spent. There's a storage facility over there. But there's no power to it. Hmm. So we can't get inside. So we can't get inside. Huh. Well, um, if you bring in the spare generator we have in the shuttle, we, I might be able to jury rig up something so that we can get through and get at those tools. Because you're right, we do need those if we're going to keep going. I'm good with that. I got nothing else to ask. Cool. Yeah. Right. So, 
Great go team. Alright, so my go. Yep, yep. So I have. This the, is the last. Yeah, round, this, right? this is round four. four. So this oh, start. dang. Yeah. Man. Remember we last, haven't found people yet. Yeah. Remember last round when we said it was the third round? Yeah. yeah. I didn't. So, I so this didn't. is a, a vignette of desperation Ooh. with regarding uh, insulated or quarantined power systems. Lisa Club, seven of hearts. Lisa, Lisa Club and back. seven of hearts. This is this is driving me nuts. I I can't. I we need to rescue these people. We're running out of time. We have no way of getting through this hallway, and it's it's it's, it's aggravating me. All I want to do is save these lives, and. If we can't get through this door, like, what are we going to do? We need power. And, like, sure, we have the, the generator in, in our ship that we can use. But, like, is it going to be enough? Like, are we ever going to get through? Like, there, there's got to be other power here that we can use where it's just not being utilized. Like, we thought the we, we thought the place, the the star station was was malfunctioning. So maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the power is, is just cut off but it's still there and maybe it's still stored so like we, we have to get through this door we need to be able to save these people all right aaron you're up all right this is your last scene my last let's be sure not to forget about that additional bit of debris oh, yeah. i figure because, that, because we I as a group a tend to like no i set up something big and then forget that it's there no, no i was i was remembering i figured that was what was giving us additional problems with the timing which is why yeah. this is the yeah. last yeah. official round yeah works for me Okay. I just know this group. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the eight of spades and the nine of spades. All right. So the eight of spades is an ensemble of illness and injury, and the nine of spades is an energy crippled laboratory. So the scene is that we managed to. At, we decided that the best that we would start looking through the rooms. So one of the closest rooms was the lab, lab, laboratory. So we went in there to discover a small a small group of people who had been uh, seeking refuge there after, because it had was one of the few places that seemed to still have oxygen. Um, but they're trapped in there because we there's no oxygen outside the door. Um, so we have, we're worried about what would happen if, you know, we open the door, how we fix it. And getting in there also would be helpful because it could fix the, the power surge problem potentially. So we're are we now in the laboratory? Um, or are we outside? If we want to push this along further, I'm fine with us being inside. Okay. But how sure. do we get the yeah? Then we can ignore the yeah. air oxygen problem and pretend that doesn't exist. That it's got a yeah. double hatch and that we can yeah cool. There we go. Okay. The yeah the door is a double hatch. It's an Perfect. old ship. It was built very conservatively. Well, it's a laboratory quarantine issues. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a good one. Oh. Cool. Okay. Yeah. That's that's how we're gonna do this. We're inside with people. Cool. We found the people. Yay. Well, we found okay. some people. We found, we, found a, we found a people. We found the people. Yes. All right. So we need to get these people off of here. But like, how do we get them out? I mean, we're we're running into this situation where we have to get them into an area where there's there's not enough there's potentially not enough oxygen for them. Like they we have they have to be able to survive. Like we have to rescue these people. We might need to see if we can find oxygen suits somewhere. That might be the only way out of here. They, just because they're not in this room doesn't mean that they don't have some on the ship. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Why don't we ask them? Yeah. Hey, do you, so you're you're now an NPC. Uh, do you, are there any other oxygen suits around here? Like, is there anything? Are, are you gonna spend the? I don't know. What's the are you gonna spend the point? That one's dripping on me. Oh yes, I do have to spend a drama point because I'm not the director. Um, I did say there were people in the room, so. Yes, I know, but. Oh yes. Yeah, I said I, oh, I specifically said there were like a small group of people in the room. You are correct. Yeah. If it, you want to have someone else coming from the room, you have to spend it. It's very true. It's all um, at the same time. <laughs> that works so, uh, are, are there are there other oxygen suits throughout the ship? We 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 need something to get you guys out of here. There should be some um, if you go around into the find out another thing that might <laughs> come up. So. Uh, Communications. <laughs> okay. Because of reasons, it's next door. Everything works out. Oh yeah. Okay. Fine. Cool. I, I don't know. If that's don't actually know. the case. Um, there should be some. I figured they'd have a couple quarantine suits in here. Just mm -hmm. cause yeah. The, okay. Work. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There are a few suits here, but not enough to get everyone out. I think that some of the storage facilities along the main hallways uh, will also have suits, and there should be at least one or two in most of the other major centers of the ship. Okay. Well, at the very least, we can use the suits to move people around and we bring the suits back. Like, at least mm -hmm. we have a means mm -hmm. of moving people around now. Where's the hangar? Like, the, the, there's two docking bays. Or sorry, there's two 
sort of hangers that have hoppers in them that have craft similar to the one that we use that we can use to get back. Um, do you know if there's one that's still functional? Um, there is. I'll, I'll describe where the asteroid oh. actually hit and then... Yeah, yeah. There is one, but they're not letting us get to it. They? There's a small faction of crew on the ship who seem to have gone crazy, and they're not letting anyone else get to the one remaining craft. That's why we're hauled up in here. Awesome. Well, sounds like we have to deal with that first, then. Couldn't yeah. just be an asteroid, could it? Couldn't no. just be an asteroid. Yeah, it never just be an asteroid. <sighs> well, Doesn't make sense. Although, that does explain why the ship didn't dodge. Yeah. Or the, the well, I wonder if it even was an asteroid at all. We've, we've been making, we've been working under that assumption that it was an asteroid. Mm -hmm. It impacted inward. You know, maybe they did actually sense the asteroid, but it's the one that's still coming, not the one that hit. And they faked the hit early by making an explosion. Yeah, it yeah, wouldn't be an option, that hard yeah. to put a charge on the outside of the ship. Nope. Which means they also have access to some missiles. Mm-hmm. All right, so we have to go deal with this other faction first. And then we can then we can get these people out of here. Mm -hmm. Well, as so long as yeah, actually no, yeah, we totally need to do that. Okay. Ignore what I was gonna say. When, when we have a moment, can we talk? Um, sure. But I don't think this is the best time. No, I, no, I wasn't saying that. <laughs> and scene. All right, cool. Um, Justin, you're up. All right, my scene will be described by the Seven of Diamonds and the Two of Spades. The Seven of Diamonds <clears throat> is an interrogation regarding technical problems, mm -hmm. and the Two of Spades is an energy crippled hatch. Okay. That hatch is, is putting in work. Man, all the Indeed. hatches. All damn hatches. Yeah. Them energy crippled hatches. So, you, you get to interrogate someone? About technical issues. <laughs> About technical issues. It's okay. There's no what drama points for you to steal. <laughs> you did so manage to be useful. immensely useful. It's really unfortunate. Okay, okay so, interrogation okay. regarding okay. technical difficulties. Ergo, Aaron's involved. About our energy crippled hatch. So, do you actually think that with what we've got right now and our little portable generator, that you can get through the door of that storage room? Yes, I should be able to. And what's the plan if... What's the plan for the different things we might find behind that door? Well, ideally we find enough suits to get everyone out. And with a ship this size, the average storage for these suits should be enough if we combine it with the ones that are already in the lab. So there are about ten people in there. Do you not have any schematics of the ship to consult for that? I'm to see what might be in there? Uh, let me check. Uh, yes, but it doesn't have that information. Though it does look like there are at least two other storage closets that we should be able to get to, like this one. Uh, so even if there aren't that many suits in it, we should be okay. Okay. Uh, is it? Does it have the uh, double layer door like this one does? Um, well, no, we're just going into the closets, not the laboratory. The, the closets wouldn't have double doors. Okay, so hopefully no one's hiding in here. Um, no, they shouldn't be. Or, well, it's possible there's still oxygen there, but that they're stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to need to be careful with this, unless you think that you can power mm -hmm. this door back on again. Yeah, because if they're smart, they'll put a suit on on the other side. Yeah, if they're smart. If they're smart. All right, so that was your five questions, I think. And with that, you're up. Yep. For the last scene. <laughs> it's me. All right, guys, let's do this. Ah, one time. Okay. Six of hearts and the four of... All right, so Six of Hearts, an interlude with regards to fire or oxygen. The four of Spades, an energy crippled hallway. Well, I like points, so it's y'all. Okay, so it's. I get a point! You're welcome. Oh my god! Holy crap! All right, so it's so it's Peter and myself. Yep. And um, we decided that it would be a good idea for myself. And Oswin to go look for the suits while you guys deal with um, whatever is preventing us from getting to the to the hangar, so we can access something to leave. So, 
you know, ship flies out, that kind of thing. That's what we're looking for here. Um, I've I've granted you access, so you can open the door. I haven't opened it yet. Wait, the door? To, which door? The one into the hangar. So you're in a hallway that doesn't work. I managed to get the door working. Okay. Okay, so we're no longer... Okay. Okay, so we have the option so of opening a, this door into this hallway. There's been a bit of a jump forward in time. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. That's, okay, that's so, what I was struggling with. So myself with. and Aaron's character are going to look for suits. Well, yeah, we're trying mm-hmm. to get more suits so we can get everyone out. And you guys are trying to get the ship that'll help us get out. Which yep. is presumably defended by crazy people. Yeah. Yes. Largely unarmed crazy people, though, we can assume. And I've I've given you a... Of the list of firearms that I have available. <laughs> <laughs> a thing. <laughs> a man probably, shooter. Probably more, about, probably more about pistol than a rocket launcher <laughs> or rifle of the sorts, but uh, yeah. Cool. It's, it's completely up to you what you actually have. Okay. Alright. So, on the plus side, if this is sealed off, and they're used to having oxygen on the other side of this door, you know, us opening it might just solve the problem that might be there. Like, yeah. I mean, it's either one of two things. There's either no one behind here, everything's great, or it's full of crazy people who are potentially armed, who are potentially not crazy, who, you know, the laboratory people might be the off ones. I mean, we only did just meet them. And um, then, assuming they're not suited up, we kill them all. Instantly. Yeah. Or they are suited up, and they kill us back. Yeah, I mean, like, on one hand, I really want to save, like, if there's innocent people on the other side of the street, I really want to save them. But you know what, like, I, like, the, we already know that there's people that we can save, and, like, the, mm-hmm. it feels like we almost need to take a bit of a chance here in order to get through here. Like, we're running out of time. Like, I agree. I think, regardless of what's actually on the other side of the door, we do need to open this. It's just, I'm, I'm a little, I don't want to. It's you know terrifying. I'm gonna do it. I'm. I'll, I'm you gonna, open that, and I'm gonna I will have to be deal back with here. it. Yeah, like I'm. Just, I'm gonna. I'm gonna grit my teeth. I'm going for it, um, and I'm gonna open the door. Uh, and uh, there's this huge hiss as all of a sudden we realize that the other side, yeah, it was pressurized, um, and all of a sudden all the air is gone from it. Um, and I tell Justin to look inside. <laughs> I'm not looking inside. That's not what I'm trying. No. No, Ugh. search and rescue. Go go go! God damn it! I am. I guess I am search and rescue. Yeah. So uh, I look inside, and um, all of a sudden I see a. As as I'm peering around the side of the, the, the door, a body flies out and hits me in the face. Um, a dead body, unfortunately. Um, and I notice a number of people that uh, that looked like they were armed in there. Uh, Pea shooters, nonetheless, like little pistols, but but still armed, um, and it looks like they were not wearing suits, um, and it looks like we have um, we've killed off some of them. Um, all right, and see. And see. Okay, um, so given that Glenn and I have a lot of the drama points, uh, we're gonna go first, uh, or uh, I'll say I'll go first, uh, just for. The sake of kicking it off, um, it. and we'll, we'll we'll try and get us to burn through our drama points first. Um, Aaron obviously has the least, so we want to make sure that we can still try and hopefully save her, uh, and she doesn't get trapped, and doesn't die. That's never fun. Um, so uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, so we don't draw from the we don't draw no from the cards for this, um, but everybody does. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy just got really philosophical real fast. <laughs> Yeah, so we don't draw from the deck for this. It's just vignettes for the rest of the, the rest of the game here. Um, so I'll start off. Um, and as I as I open the door and I see that the bodies float past, I, I, I'm breathing a sigh of relief because I mean we're uh, we don't have to fight anyone. I mean, and obviously it would have been nice to save these people. And we really want to, but like it's just safer to not be involved in these fights when you don't have to, when you don't have to. Uh, and and, I, and as I'm as I'm think, thinking about this, I, I hear this jarring sound, and all of a sudden I hear this asteroid collide into us, and I feel the shake, and, I, and all of a sudden we're like, you can feel, you can hear the pressure releasing out of all the other um, areas of the ship. Like we need to get out of here now, um, and that will be me. So uh, myself and Oswin are hurrying as fast as we can. 
to to get to the suits. Um, we're luckily we're in a pressurized location, but it turns out to not be luckily when the asteroid hits because we're both thrown against the wall. Neither of us are really injured that much because it was it wasn't that close. It was closer to the hangar, it seems. Uh, but uh, it does it does release some of the suits and some of them get damaged. Some of them get tears in them as they they perforate on the door. Um, also, they're not they're not very light. So they're a little heavy. Um, so we can only really take back two each. So we start making our first trip back, hoping that we can save as many people as we can. Awesome. All right, so I'll go next. Uh, burn down another one of my drama points. Um, uh, so I. I I, I, I'm a little jarred by the by the impact, but I, I realize that we have to get out of here. So I'm um, I, I, I I keep going forward. I need to find a way to this hangar, um, and I see another door. Um, but it looks like we can open this one. It looks like the whoever was in here before was using this for access. So the other side may be pressurized. Uh, so I'm going to close the other door behind me temporarily, at least. So at least I can get through the other side and conserve some of the the oxygen, the pressure in here. Um, and I open it up. Um, and it looks like it's it's that it's the other hangar. It looks like I'm, I'm on the other side, but uh, it it it, do, it does look like it's, there's not a lot of power here. It looks like uh, looks like we're gonna need our engineer to help work on some of this. Um, but there there is a craft here, and we can use it if, if we can get it operational in time. I mean, we don't have a lot of time left. This place is this disintegrating around us. And that's me. Okay. Cool. So. I make a break immediately for the ship to to first of all see if it has any power, see if it has any fuel, and if even if I can get the doors open on the stupid thing, um, get to it. It's open. It's. I assume that the the faction of the faction of let's assume that they're crazy because they're dead now, and you can't. We can, you just I just can't deal with thinking that they might have been right that the people we're gonna go and save are actually the people who blew up the station because they chickened out they didn't want to go they wanted to go back to Earth and not brave new frontiers this is easier they were crazy people and they're dead now and it's their own fault and whoever they were they were planning on using the this sh this shuttle so it's open and fueled the engines are spooled up but I get started on that cool nice sounds good I like the little Philosophical bend that took for a while there was awesome. Yeah, uh, that was good. Nice. All right, who wants to go next? Do I use one of mine now? Yep. Sure. Now's a good time. Okay. As Max and I get back to the lab and start helping people into suits, I just can't help but look over at him, and seeing him helping these people reminds me why I loved him in the first place. I take a second and just silently put my arms around him and press my head against his chest, wishing that these stupid suits weren't keeping us apart. And a tear, single tear trickles down my cheek as I steal myself and go back to helping people into their suits. We start taking people slowly towards the hangar and all I can do is hope that they've managed to get the ship working. And that really they aren't dead. Scene. Cool. So, um, I'll go next. So, as always, when I move the people, the, the people that we can move from the lab into the, the hangar, we're not really sure what we're going to come up on. We're not really sure what we're going to find. We do notice that, that there are some weapons and body or two floating past. I don't recognize any of the, the bodies, but who knows what we'll come up on. I appreciate her signs of affection. It's different. She's changed. I think the whatever problems that we had between us, I think the sense of impending doom, if it's there, um, it's changing how it's changing our priorities. We've also fought less on this mission. Something I noticed. I don't know how much of that was me and how much of that was her, but I really hope that that when I do renew my vows, that she does too. Even though I'm putting her on the spot. We get to the hangar and everything's working out okay. Peter's in the, the cockpit of the ship, doing what he does best. I wave to him as we come upon the ship. 
you start loading the, the people on. Cool. So I'll go next. Um, all right. So I find the hangar, and I'm just I'm relieved to see that the ship is there. I'm glad we're not going to die on here, um, but I'm glad that we're getting all these people off of here. I mean, I would um, if if we didn't if we weren't able to save them, I would have died trying to get them off of here, and then all this would have been for moot. We would have lost four other people. This wasn't. This wouldn't have even been worth it. But to see that I've I've been able to save these people's lives makes me feel great, and I'm, I'm glad that um, <laughs> I'm glad that that four people will still have their lives after we're done here. Um, it's it's a shame that these new this new world isn't going to get colonized. They're gonna have to send another ship out. Hopefully this time there's no more issues. And, and we can continue to, to populate the universe, but at least we, at, at least we save some people from 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 the the cold, hard uh, death that that they would experience if when the airlocks broke. All right, I'll go next. Um, so as Cody returns, I inform him that we only really have enough suits to, to for three other people. We can't rescue them all. That they'll have to make the the hard decisions regarding who can who can leave and who can't. Um, also, there's occupancy problems. Um, he doesn't report that there's a second ship, but I don't think we have enough time to make it there. And he's certainly willing to try. He seems going home enough. But um, I'm not willing to risk any more lives. For it. All right. Well, on that note, I'll go in one more time. All right. <laughs> you, have, you have what, two or three? I have uh, two left. Um, there's, there's not enough room. Are you kidding me? We have occupancy problems. We don't have enough suits. No, to hell with that. I found another hangar. I am going to go find some. I'm going to find another ship. I'm going to find more suits. I am going to do whatever it takes. Like, this isn't... That is not acceptable. We got to, like double stuff people or something in order to fit them into the suits like we have to get the people off of here like this is this is insanity and i like i'm i'm running towards the other hangar and and i'm 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 i find one more ship there um and i i'm, I'm frantically searching around and i i don't know if i can get this online i don't know how to how to use it um i i see I see controls. I see a power button. Like that's that's a. I can turn it on, but that's that's about all I can do. Like, I'm, like unless we have another pilot among the civilians, like we're not we're not going to be able to use this. I don't know what to do. Like I can try, but then we're. I guess I guess some chance is better than no chance. And like there are a few other suits here, but it's. I I, I worry it's not going to be enough, and that that doesn't sit right with me. I don't know what I'm supposed to do then. And that's me. Hmm. You should probably go next. I know. I continue to... Now that ship's stabilized, engines are spooling up, uh, now I need to get the hangar doors open, or at least figure out how to get the ship to open up the hangar doors. Also on clamp. Also on clamp. Well, that's, just, that's, that's all part of it. <laughs> get the ship free and get the hangar doors open. And so... I leave the shuttle, just sort of pushing my way through other people who are trying to get on board to go search all the, just the numerous banks controls that I have no idea what any of these ones do. This, this is an old ship. It's, it's, there's never, there's never a, this is the button that lets you out because there has to be, there's always someone who makes their job a little bit too important and takes the bloody labels off them. So... I just find what's the most worn down and hope that this is going to be right. And I notice I am, as I'm searching through these, I note that Oswin and um, Cosgrove are getting along, which is nice. That solves that problem for me. I mean, it was really a lot of fun while it lasted, but like my grandfather used to say, if she's one in a million, there's 300 more in California, and they probably have a TAM. So, <laughs> <laughs> and see. Oh no, it's gone. And so I will, 
I will keep searching, and hopefully I can find something inside the shuttle that corresponds to one of these controls to get these doors open when we do need to leave. And see. <laughs> All right. Well played. Well played. <laughs> Too good. Too, too good. Okay. Well, I have two left, so I'll go. Okay. Um, I, 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 I find some suits. Um, so I, I, I pick them up. Uh, these, these are, these are still pretty heavy. It looks like there's like some artificial gravity in here or something. Like I, I can, I can only carry two or three of them. Um, and I, I'm pulling them. I'm running as fast as I can. I hand them to some of the civilians, and they, they put them on. And uh, thankfully, it looks like we can get a few more of them off. But like, I don't. I'm, I'm going to try firing up the other ship. I'm going to try and figure it out. But like, I don't think this is going to work. I don't think. I don't think I'm going to make it. I, I I think that. I think that there's going to be three more lives saved, but that's not going to be mine, and that's fine. That's that's the way it's got to be. That's, that's what I came on this mission for. I knew that's what I was getting myself into. And that's what they paid me for. Kali! <laughs> it's okay. I spelt my name with a K. You're not missing <laughs> out. Um, so I have one left. Uh, just, okay, I'll go next. Um, so I noticed Peter fiddling around the controllers. Seems to be having trouble finding which one's sort of up from down. I decided to go over and help him out. I remember my father telling me when he was working as a mechanic how these things on the old bunk, bunk sorry, on the old clunkers work. I remember him telling me that they always put the the docking clamp removal and the door release in the weirdest position. And he was <laughs> never sure why it was in a door underneath the console. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was for security reasons, but if you know where it is, how secure is it? Really? Uh, although I think that's actually why we're here right now is because whoever those people were with the weapons that we saw go past they couldn't figure it out they might have been doing exactly what Peter was so I show them where the, uh, the, the, the release mechanisms are and hopefully we can get underway but before we get moving I notice three more people come in through the hangar bay so I wave, wave them up I really hope we get out of here this place seems like it's coming down around us. One of the doors is already has already collapsed. I think that was where Cody went through. I don't know. I didn't see him leave. Cool. Your turn, Justin. Cosgrove shows me where the where the releases are, and I can put them to a delay that can get us out of here. But that bloody cowboy hasn't found his way back here. He's probably off trying to save someone who's already dead. Um, I have no idea where he is. I can't get in contact with him. And I'm the one who can get us out of here. But I don't know how long to set this timer for if he's not here. Usually, this sort of thing, if you needed to do this, and in this case we really do, you'd set it for about 10 or 15 seconds, but I, I don't know how long I can set it for, and so I'm going to be stuck waiting here by this timer. And i got to wait for him to come through the door before I can set this thing to get us out of here. Oh. <laughs> Rocks fall, everyone dies. <laughs> oh. Aaron? Okay. As soon as we realized Cody was missing, Max immediately decided that he was going to be have to be the one to go back and get him, but I couldn't let him go. I almost lost him once, and I'm not willing to do it again. It just about killed me, and no, that's not something that's going to happen. I grabbed him and forcibly pulled him back into the ship and just said, there's no more time. We can't do this. We need to get these people off. And got everyone ready to go. And I don't... Like, Cody's a great guy, but he made a sacrifice, and I know he'd be okay with this. He would rather we escape. Cool. See. <laughs> I like when I said he's a great guy, and then Glenn just goes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of a pain. <laughs> a bit of a pain. Um, all right. Congratulations! So I can narrate your doom. I can narrate, narrate my doom. doom. Um, and then Glenn gets to save us. Yeah. Um, all right. And 
So I I start running down the hallway. I try and grab a few more suits, and I, I, I find there's, there's two left, and I realize that there's more than two people left there. Um, and I... I, I, I run them in and I say that like there's there's two suits left and someone's got to choose and um, and at the end of the day like they, they they fought and they quarreled and there were tears that were wept but at the end like there was there was not enough time to like people had to pick someone had to get on that ship um, and I was going to force people into those suits if it came down to it the women and children first. Um, and we were going to do whatever we could to get them off, off of here. Um, we, should, we, we grabbed two more people and we, we ran and uh, I'm, I'm hurrying them ahead and I, I'm, I, I'm trying to get I get them on the ship um, and I, I'm, I'm fiddling around with the controls and the, and the, and the place is crumbling around around me um, and I, I don't know how to I don't know how to operate the ship and I, I, I find the way to turn it on but but we're docked, and I have no idea where the control is to, to, to open it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm scrambling at the controls, and I have no idea. And I search and I search and I'm pressing everything, and then there's no more. And all there is is a destroyed space station around me. And they did not make it, and neither did I. And see this day. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, I obviously die. <laughs> um, I don't know, you're in a suit. You get pulled out into space. Okay, so on a long enough timeline, I'm going to have a very... <laughs> you'll be sucked into a gravity well and die. Yeah. <laughs> um, At least you didn't starve. Well, actually, at some point, you should kind of want to go... And hopefully, quick and painless, or yeah. quick and very painful, but very quick. So I don't know where Cody is. Osmond's managed to convince Peter to set the timer, and we're heading out of here. The place basically just falls apart and there's no explosion there's never an explosion in space I never really know what those movies are about it's far less beautiful understanding how many people we lost today but even understanding how many we saved too I think Cody would have wanted it this way I know Osmond's been bothered but I take her aside I take the ring out of my pocket I get down on one knee and I renew my wedding vows to her. <laughs> All right. Well, that ended on a slightly better note. <laughs> I like that. That's a good ending. We don't need to add more to this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is Joan of Arc. Um, so overall, I, I I enjoyed it. It's it's kind of hard to come up with things on the fly. Like I, I have trouble coming up with things really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. obviously you don't see that because we cut all that out and we kind of reduce it down. So There's just gonna just be the a good blooper bits. Reel. <laughs> yeah. Oh my so, god! So many blooper reels. It's gonna be longer than the original. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of this, take a look. There's a little bit of a link to the blooper reel. Definitely check that out because and uh, we, we we did our best to watch the language and everything while we did this, and we're not gonna watch our language in the blooper reel. So. I'm not good at this, guys. Yeah, really bad. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty bad. bad. Um, that being said, uh, this was this was very fun. Did de definitely did enjoy it. This was um, phenomenal. I really enjoyed uh, this. This was really fun. So I so again, the uh, the Kickstarter. You should definitely check that out. Um, mm -hmm. Find it there. Yeah, there it is. Um, so again, don't forget the Kickstarter. Um, it's only on for a couple more days. So please. Go spend some money on this. Again, it's really cheap. Like, even if it's just a dollar and it's just a way of saying, hey, this is cool, I can't afford much more, um, you're not going to get anything for that. But if you spend $3, you at least get one of the, the games. Uh, so we played Joan of Arc. Uh, and, but there's 15 of these. So uh, it's a good deal. You should definitely check that out. Um, mm -hmm. So very quickly, uh, big shout out to Jim Pinto who was the guy who hooked us up with this uh, and is actually the, the, uh, the, guy, the guy who did the, the writing for this and a bunch of the graphics uh, in, the, in the instruction manuals. So a uh, big thank you to him for letting us review this. Uh, we definitely did enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much about it. So from, yeah, so from the iGamer team, thank you very much. Uh, pick this up. It's definitely a good time. Check out our videos and subscribe. Take care. Oh, I love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>